Peace to the gods and the goddesses of the nation, of the land, and of all creation. I hope everybody doing well in this time that we in. But, you know, we still got to keep our heads up and we still got to be maintain some sort of positive, some sort of positivity to where we could be able to continue on and still set a better example for not only ourselves and adults alike, but for our children. You know, I just wanted to come to you guys and speak about something. And, you know, I'm not against protesting. I'm not against, you know, anybody, you know, standing up for the certain right of another individual. I'm not against the blacks protesting. I'm not against the white protesting. But it seems to me at this point in time that this Black Lives Matter movement is becoming a fad. And the thing about when you're dealing with in, with injustice and things of that nature to where, you, you get what I mean, when you're dealing with injustice, it cannot be something that's just made, you know, just to look good. It cannot just be something that's made to be able to get everybody to conform with your ideology. It's about something that's true. It's about something that's just. And it's something that's right. You have to go in it you have to go into it with the intentions to make something better. You can't go into the attention because you want everybody to feast their eyes on you. The whole Black Lives Matter movement and the whole blackout or whatever you want to call these things when you're protesting for the rights and the civil rights of African Americans that's in the American community, you're supposed to be doing it for change. You're not doing it. We're not. You're not supposed to do it to loot. You're not supposed to do it for personal monetary gain. You're supposed to do it for the gain of the betterment of the ideology that some people in this world hold dear to their hearts. And they have for centuries and centuries. And that ideal is hate towards a person of a different complexion than you. To feel that they're beneath you. To feel that you have a badge so you're a able to, you know, belittle somebody that doesn't have that authority that you have. That's what it's about. It's not about everybody sitting up there blacking out all of their screens. It's not about their sitting up there breaking into all all cars or anything. To me, honestly, I can understand some people, you know, aiming that towards the police because of the police brutality that has happened in this world today. I can understand somebody wanting to go full force with the police, but as far as with looting, I don't you know, I really don't condone that because it's innocent people out here whose stuff that you may be fucking up and then they have to rebuild from that. But what I want you guys to understand and trust and believe I'm totally with protesting and doing something right to promote positive change. But I want the positive change. I want your actions better yet. I want your actions to be for the positive change. I want your actions, the things that you do to be because you want to see black people be fared off with the police. I want you to do these things, not just so you could get a couple of likes on social media or you could, you know, get a couple of extra fans on your YouTube page. This is the reason why I didn't initially speak about it, because I understand the thing that some people do to where they look at some shit like it's a fact. And that's something to just go along with like a lot of these NBA teams are doing want to run with some uh, owners y'all ain't got nothing to do with this I understand the players the black players that's on the field, you know promoting, you know a betterment a change Yes, but NBA owners. I really don't care what you got to say unless you donating some money to help the cause then you can say something if you just want to comment on something just because you want people to look in your team's direction that's for the wrong purpose and the same thing goes for other people who are not rich and famous so who just want attention to be put on them to be able to talk about a subject that is very dear to an african-american person's heart don't do it just for fame this is all i'm saying 
I don't like people who do things because everybody else is doing it. You're supposed to do it because you want that. You you sincerely want that betterment inside of an African American's life. And what I see right now is a lot of like people like the Antifa people, you know, starting off riots and stuff like that. When people are protesting, you have cops that's bit sitting up there initiating contact with individuals in order to cause bodily harm on them in order to get things riled up and get to get people bad. This is what I've been telling you guys about a martial law. This is, if you look at my timeline with my video, I tell you, I'm talking about for months now, for years now, I've been telling you guys that this was going to happen. I told you when the COVID-19 happened that it was not meant for us, that what was meant for us was unrest in the community. That way, in order to you to bring military force on your home front, in order to control the masses, because what happens when things like this start happening, what does that do? That create fear against the people who's not about that life. And if a person is fearful to come out their house, what does that do? That hurts the economy. The economy, the world cannot turn without that. So what would the government do they will send in the military force in order to get the people under control which inflicts on martial law family i've been telling y'all this for months this is why i didn't really jump up on this whole situation you know i'm it's more than just George Floyd, you know, rest in peace to him, but it's more than him. You got the Brianna the Brianna Shorty that was killed by the um police. You got the man that was jogging that that was killed by the police over the last couple of months. It's been more and more police brutality and police killed killings and it's just been building up and it was all done on purpose in order to inflict martial law i bet the majority of y'all don't even know that if martial law happens the president has the right to keep himself into office until the unrest has stopped this is the last year of Trump's presidency. If a civil unrest comes to where the military government has to take control over the country, that president will still be an office family. You get what I'm saying to you? So when you look at all these things that's happening throughout the world, know that these things are happening for a reason, family. With the COVID-19, that was for the population control in China. With this situation, it's to be, make this a dictatorship country in order to keep one ruler in office who's going to enact everything that that hierarchy wants him to do. And by that being in place, by the martial law, by civil unrest, and by having to bring the military forces on your home front, that enables a president to veto any type of office, you know, competition, basically, you know, the presidential race. It gives him the right to veto all of that until the government and the country are stable. And the majority of people don't even notice that. And they feed in right into the trap. You have government agents that's out here right now starting trouble in the masses in order to create civil unrest. They are doing whatever is in their power to keep this man in office. They have a plan. They have an agenda. It is not finished yet. And until it is finished, Trump will remain in office family you get what i'm saying so if you out here protesting family watch who the next person is around you pay attention to your surroundings on who initiates who's the loudest who's the most jumpiest because in a lot of these situations it hasn't been a black person it's been a white person who start doing something break a window start a fire or something and then the police come and who is the first people that they are attacking they are attacking black people and what does that do? That makes even more civil unrest because the African Americans that are there at that time that see this are going to break out. Why do you think that they put the 5G? You see, they was 
if you notice in your, in your community, they was hurrying up putting the 5G towers up. Why? Because the 5G towers fucks with your frontal cortex lobe. Your frontal lobe that makes rash decisions that keep you from acting out and creating uncivil, uncivil unrest in the community. They put these in place because this was scheduled, family. This right here was scheduled for all of us. And all that we all we doing is sitting up here feeding right into the trap. Do you post to protect yourself from the police? I believe that. I believe that any police that's even coming into office should only be in the black if that's if they black should come to the black community. You get what I'm saying to you, family? If they come to the black community, then they're most likely around the people that they know. So if you black and you a police officer and you in a black community, you will show more leniency to certain things and more, have more understanding to certain things because you grew up in that type of situation. You do not send a white cop who grew up in the suburbs to a black neighborhood because he does not understand that neighborhood. He can't reason because he hasn't been able to experience that neighborhood. But regardless of the fact, family, this right here has all been planned by the government. This has all been affected by the United Nations because they're trying to put us in that 10 districts to where they have a one world government. So until then, I'm going to keep dropping y'all this news. I want y'all to stay safe and stay sane in your mind because that's what they after, family. They after your mind. Until then, peace to the gods and the goddesses of the nation, of the land, of all creation. Everybody be well. Everybody stay blessed. And we out.